I'd just like to introduce you to Robert Ty from ABS Solutions. Um, he will be talking to us about RFID. So put your hands together for Robert Ty. Um, okay, thanks to the TSA for letting us first come here and actually talk about RFID. So, privilege. Thanks, Gillian. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about ABS's experience with RFID um, across the world in a couple of locations. Um, we've been dealing with laundry software for 27 years um, and just recently, I'd say in the last like five or six years, um, RFID is becoming more and more popular. Um, we've always worked with LF tags and HF tags, um, but now we're, everyone's diversifying into the benefits of tracking and tracing linen more so than anything else using um, UHF RFID. Um, so, so this is just um, a little bit about ABS. So we've been going for 27 years, um, and of that 27 years, everywhere that you can actually see a dark blue country, we've got an installation of our software running. Not everywhere yet has got UHF installed, but we're working on it. Um, so the basics of um, a RFID system is you're going to need, um, say, certain instances of scanning to make sure you get everything correct. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to have new products coming in or you're going to have existing products and you have to retrofit or get the actual tag onto the product. So this is called the assigning stage. So just here, indicated by the box, um, you've got an antenna, we've got a new box of products that's come from the supplier and it's got a tag already incorporated and hopefully discreetly placed in the tag when it's manufactured. Um, and then within our system, just to show you, that literally you would bring up a work order to a stock room, you would say I've got 100 double sheets, we'll click on the sign, that box would then go into a scanning portal or over a scanning device. The reader would read it and then it would get validated and then these codes would then be assigned to that double sheet. So it's as simple as that, that's just a box of 100 there. Um, and that's now, all that box has just been tagged up for um, 100 sheets. One thing to keep in mind, and you'll see it on a later slide, is that when your manufacturers put in that tag, you're going to say, I've got a box of 100 sheets and your box um, on that counter, it'll come up 101. It has been known that manufacturers do put two tags into one product just to make sure there's a tag in there, which doesn't benefit you as a laundry, but it's been known. So you really have to work with your supplier and say, look, two in this case isn't better than one because it's just going to mess up um, all of your scanning and all of your reading. Um, so the next part um, is here as a soil scan, so a, a wash scan. So let's go to that. So in the laundry, the readers, this is two um, layered antennas. Um, we've got one pointing down a belt and one pointing up the belt. So these are products now going up a conveyor belt and that is just reading constantly. And as that product passes the antenna, um, it's picking up the signal of the code, which were the codes that you saw earlier coming up. And that's registering now that that scan location is an in-scan and that product has arrived into the laundry, um, whether from stock or whatever previous scan that it's had. Um, and that's as simple as it gets. So you don't have to count linen in or anything. Just run it up a conveyor belt or um, through a portal or there's lots of devices that you can get. Um, but that's quite a simple and cheap and easy way to do an in-scan. That's all you need. Um, one thing to point out with antennas is that you can get left-hand polarity and right-hand polarity antennas. If you do go and, 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 and look at it and you might do something yourself, is that never get a left-hand antenna and a left-hand antenna and point them at each other because the polarity when the waves cross will actually cancel themselves out and then you won't get an accurate read. It can actually cause grey spots in there. So really, when you look into this, make sure you take um, antenna polarity in. Um, we've just done a job where we've took over um, an installation and we put it in our software and they had 16 antennas located around the building and they were saying they weren't getting good reads, what could we do? And everything was a left-hand antenna pointing at each other and that was a reason why um, the reads weren't that good. So the next thing, obviously, the products are going to come in. The products are going to go through a washing process. The next one um, is a give and take. You don't need this. Um, to run up a basic installation of RFID. But for us personally, we think that's actually um, a good solution. Here you've actually got a bundling station. The products go down, they get bundled. Here she's got some um, towels and we've got the antenna rigged on the side and the screen. She's actually checking as she's bundling that there are 10 towels in that bundle. 
and they are all the same size towels. There's no customer specific, so it's not a bundle of 10 towels, nine being white and one being embroidered for the Sheraton Hotel. This is making sure you've got accuracy in your bundles. Um, sometimes, obviously, a customer's going to get a bundle, then there could be a packing error, they open it up, and there might be a table runner in with some tablecloths. So this is a way that you can make sure that your um, packing um, is effective and it's accurate all the time. And obviously, you can correct any mistakes at that point. Um, so that's an option. You don't have to do it. Um, but the next one is um, definitely um, needed. And this is where you're going to have um, an order from a customer. You have to pack that order. And then you're going to run that through an outscan station. Now, here's a tunnel outscan station. You can buy different types with doors on. You can have a tabletop. But with this scenario, we've got a computer on the one side with two screens. The person comes along with their packing note on this side, scans it, which then determines the customer they're packing for. And as they run the container through the tunnel, they come to the other side and they double check to make sure that everything's accurate and the scanner picked up um, what they expected. And then they confirm it. Now, in the tunnel scenario, um, there's two PIR sensors located in the front and the rear. As they walk into the tunnel, it starts to read. If she walks quite quick and there's actual reads happening on that cage as she's exiting, the red light goes on and says you've walked through too quick. The more tags you've got, the more time you're going to need to read. So obviously, if you've got a very heavily packed cage and you're walking through, you have to take it slow, especially through this device. Um, so if you've got less products, like that was um, 28 um, products in that last one, you can walk through quite quick. Um, there's only a certain amount of energy that comes out of the antennas, and all of the chips have basically got to absorb that energy and ping back their signal um, in the amount of time it takes to go through. So more, and more chips that you've got, the slower you go through in that instance. Um, other ones, you shut the door, and when you shut the door, um, basically everything will read, and the same thing happens in those units, is that when there's no more chips being read, then it assumes everything's been read, and then the door's open, so it's a bit of a different scenario. Um, and then the last one, again optional, um, just to keep the database clean, if you get products that are coming back or discontinued, then you can just rag products out and then take them out of the system. But definitely the first three, well the first two and the last one is what you need for a very basic system. And it doesn't have to be a massive portal, it can be just some of those basic antennas. So. When you come to set this up, there's two ways that you can actually utilize the data. The first one is the basic version of track and trace only. So that is where you're saying that I'm going to take this product and I'm going to give it to customer A. It's going to come back, then it's going to go to customer B. Um, and that doesn't have to be sort of like 100% of all the reads. It might be that you're just doing sampling data. The other way that you can set up is integrated into orders and invoicing. So whatever goes out is then integrated directly to invoicing, um, and also you can trigger loss billing. So loss billing um, won't happen with tracking and tracing automatically, but when you integrate it, if a product isn't returned after, say, 60 days or 90 days, that's when you can automatically trigger an invoice to have loss charges on there. Um, so there's two different ways of doing it. Um, there's lots of cloud solutions out there that you can use, um, and then there's other integrated solutions. We do both, um, but yeah, lots of suppliers out there. Going on to an example of one of our customers, one of our biggest customers um, that's using it, which I think is one of, well, my favorite ones, is down in Australia at the Fiona Stanley Hospital. Um, it's a brand new hospital facility, that's an image of it, um, and it started from the ground up, completely brand new, and they wanted it to be state of the art. And really, I'm not going to go into everything, but it was state-of-art technology built into every level of the hospital. And one of the things for the supply of linen was it had to be UHF RFID. And a lot of actual end users are now demanding in linen contracts that we have to have UHF RFID because we want to track and trace everything that's going on. Um, I'm hearing more and more that it's actually in the contracts. So just to show you what happens um, at Fiona Stanley is that it gets assigned, it comes down after the folder, and it gets checked. It comes across and then goes into an outscan portal. Then it's a delivery note and a packing note. Now, this happens actually within the laundry. And the different thing here with Fiona Stanley is that 
we've got scanners on site at the hospital. So for large contracts like hospitals, you may want to put in a scanner to confirm with the customer what is on that delivery note actually is being delivered. Now, at this location, when it gets scanned, it goes onto an ATV that just automatically takes it off to the ward, and then the soil comes back on an ATV to the soil side. Um, when this is scanned as well, it'll actually, we link it then to the ATV to make sure it goes to the right location. Um, obviously, they do a soil count that's coming back, then it gets loaded on the truck, zips back across again, and then um, at the laundry, they've actually got an in-scan portal and a conveyor belt portal running in tandem, um, doing all of the in-scans to make sure that they get all the product back. The in-scan portal is, doesn't run at 100%. You're getting high percentages in the in-scan portal, but the reason it doesn't come in at 100% is that every tag um, performs differently when it's crunched and, scru and, and, and squashed up, and when it's damp and when it's dry. Um, the optimum to get a tag to read is going to be a tag when it's flat and dry, and every tag on the market will perform brilliantly. When you start scrunching them up, different tags are made differently um, and they will respond differently. And especially when you have uh, metal cages, metal is very bad for UHF RFID. The waves don't travel through metal. And also if I had this was a tag on a metal plate and I'm reading from here, even the metal below a tag when it's very close can inhibit the tag from actually reading back um, and pinging back its code. Um, so yeah, that's why there's a, a double read. But when they're on the conveyor belt, obviously they're going up singularly, they're getting more energy, they're, they're easier to read. Other things that they do is um, a rewash. You can obviously scan them singularly and get a wish, wash history. Um, it's had 10 washes, 100 washes, 500 washes. Um, and then there's remote con um, Bluetooth um, devices where you can take inventory checks while you're at the customer. Um, and that can actually just be a regular check to see what they've got on site, or it can trigger an invoice or an order um, if linking back to an integrated system, not just tracking and tracing. Um, I said about different types of um, tags on the market. For the Fiona Stanley, they chose a Fujitsu tag compared to, um, say, a Tagsys or a Datamars tag. Now, that was important because of the MRI scanner. Um, the for difference between the tags is a Fujitsu tag is a non-metallic tag. So that's made of a silver paste antenna, where the other ones are made out of ferrous metal antennas. And if the product goes into an MRI scanner, you can see that the MRI and, um, is affected by the ferrous metals. And here you can see there's two tags. It's actually, imagine um, a water bottle. This is the water bottle actually upside down with two tags on the side. This is then the view from the top. And just here, this is the Fujitsu tag, where this is the actual um, chip itself that's causing um, the image um, defect, um, not the antenna. So some hospitals, when it comes down to tags, will determine um, which tag you should supply based on um, criteria like this. Um, okay. So just here, this is another one that I like to show. Um, this is showing a read rate test, and this is how um, that when you scrunch a tag up, it works or it doesn't work. Um, I'm a little bit biased against Fujitsu because our sister company sells Fujitsu. But, um, <laughs> so just here, um, this is just done with my, I'm wearing a glove because I don't want to make contact with the antenna. Um, if I make contact with the antenna, I become part of the antenna. So in the background, you can see that we've got three lines. When it's red, it means the tag's not working. Now I'm scrunching those up and you can see there's some red lines. Now they're all red, even the Fujitsu one. They're, and as I bring it closer to the antenna, um, one started reading and I let go and they all start reading. So this just goes to show that in that soil area and when items are compacted, now it's actually in my fist, which is actually made of water. So that is now not reading any of the tags. It's got to be really close and then I open it up and then they'll all read again. Um, by the way, the antenna is only on a read distance set at a very low power, so it's only at 50 centimetres. Um, you can see here the cycling rates that happened in that short test. Um, this is the total amount of reads that happened in 45 seconds. So just over 1,000 reads, that was the Fujitsu one. Um, blatant Fujitsu is the best, but, <laughs> um, but the tags is. But like I say, again, they all work. They all do their job. It's horses for courses. Um, but the 
tag itself charged up, dissipated its signal back, and charged up again. Um, here you can see a rate at 21 times a second compared to the other one's 13. You may want a high performance tag, you may just want a, a cheaper tag that's going to do its job. But obviously when you come to do your tests on different suppliers, um, you can find out which one works best for you. So with the Fiona Stanley Hospital, um, say so these are sort of like some of the benefits that they found. Um, knowing where the laundry is in production, um, accurate usage reports per ward, highlights packing areas, these are all of the benefits that UHF um, can actually bring. The next part I'll talk about is um, some other installations that we've got more local to home around Europe. Um, these four customers of ours um, all have UHF RFID in. Um, I won't go through too in depth because I know what my time limit is. I could talk forever on this. Um, but Celtic Linen is one in Ireland. They did a 10,000 um, test with us. Now they're actually going full blown and they're putting it into um, one of their plants. Um, and just here, um, you can see another nice um, fact is failure rates. Um, I'm being a bit negative on this one. Is that Tags are not the holy grail and they're not, you're not going to put them in and it's going to work wonders. You're going to get some failing. It's an electronic item. Um, they are small failure rates, but you've got to make sure that when you go to put in an RFID system that you do understand that there are going to be some failures and you have to have some protocol to actually get those failures out, replace the chip um, in-house yourself. So just here you can see out of 10,000, 13 failed over six weeks. Um, but the best one that um, Celtic did was this last one. With the 10,000 tests, they actually went out, um, put them into this one hotel. The hotel rang up and um, said, we're short of bath mats. Um, there were 650 bath mats tagged and placed out. They um, looked on the system and said, well, it's showing on our system. There's actually 450 located on your site. So you should have more than enough bath mats. Are you sure you want us to send this extra delivery out? So she said, oh, let me check. She went back and 10 minutes later, she said, oh, I found them. They're in the other linen cupboard. I didn't look. So just by using UHF RFID, um, they've saved themselves that extra trip going out to the customer. And you can now, proof of this, challenge the customer. You don't have to deliver on their demand. You've actually got proof and reports where you can actually address the customer and say, look, are you really sure? Because my records are showing different to what you're saying. Um, and that's a big benefit in time saving as well. Um, this one, I don't know how much you can read it because you're all like at the back a bit, bit at the front. Um, but I'm just going to pick up on the, um, this red line from Clover. This one is a healthcare laundry um, either in Belgium. Um, and they've put down here that they've detected that 22% of their linen is on site for longer than 60 days. UHF RFID, um, when I first thought about it, I instantly thought, oh, when I lose a product, I can bill that product for loss. Well, the actual benefit is not in billing the loss, it's making sure that you utilize the products that you've actually got, your capital, your investment, and make sure they circulate so you don't have to buy new product. Um, and this is a, a good example of it, 22% for longer than 60 days. No laundry wants that to be in that scenario. You want your product rotating so you can reduce basically the stock you have to purchase to service your customers. Um, Okay, um, and then this just reinforces it um, with the Celtic one. Um, it's always the same. They know you know, and we can actually prove it for the first time that you're right. You've never been able to do that before um, with, um, say, just regular linen servicing. Um, Vendrick, another one. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Hopefully you can read some of it. Um, but this was an interesting fact in red. They purchased 7,000 tags um, to put onto towels. They thought they had just over 5,000 towels. They started tagging, and at the point when I asked them for this testimonial on the benefits, they were actually at 12,930 towels. So they didn't realise that actually the towels they had in circulation was more than double than their actually um, their calculations. So UHF RFID is going to bring a lot more information to you about what's happening in your business where before you just were making judgment calls on what you thought. You can get actual um, data. And their um, little bit of advice is don't try and do everything at once. Do one customer or one product at a time when you come to actually roll out your RFID. The next one, um, regional Sealand. Um, these guys are over in Denmark. 
Um, and with this one, this is going back to the, the first one about the manufacturer. These were the guys um, that found out about the double tags and also make sure the tag's in the right place. You don't want to put a tag in a location where it's going to get folded in production in any way. The reason is that, as I showed you with that scrunch test, as soon as you fold an antenna or scrunch an antenna, it actually loses some of its capability to read. Um, so be careful that it's in the right location, not in a fold zone um, anywhere else. Um, here, this is some examples of other scan locations that are available. Um, so obviously we've done the assigning, a, an in-scan portal, a conveyor belt. You can put them onto soil bags. You can put them on the top of a CBW, on the front of just a normal um, open washing machine, on the cloying bag, sorry, cloying bag, clean bag, um, on the back of folders, on conveyor belts, portals, stack checks, um, loading onto trucks and offloading to trucks, doorways. This is a standard four port um, antenna. Uh, well, sorry, reader with four antennas and a two port. These could be located anywhere um, that you want, obviously um, on the bin. And then you've got more things that are customer on site. So we can actually have handheld devices and scan clean to the customer. So a driver could actually have an Android device and the customer says, oh, what's my delivery? Oh, it should be 100. And then scans it um, to make sure that that 100's there. Uh, next one is you might have a customer with a bulk delivery and then internally they take products out of a bulk stock room and put that into uh, a more of a local stock room. Um, so you can do transfers between on-site, um, inventory check, soil check. And this one I like, you can put an antenna behind a reception desk as long as it's wooden, don't put it in behind a metal one. And then all your bath robes and your bath towels are tagged up. As the person comes to check out, you have a light illuminate that basically is saying there's a tag been located um, in front of the reception desk. Obviously, how you deal with that is up to you. Do you want to phone the police straight away and bring them in? Or be polite about, oh, I'm just done a, going to do a rune check, if that's OK, and then maybe highlight something's gone missing. Um, but that's a nice way that you control it. Even if you don't apprehend a customer, um, say you've got um, a big luxury hotel, it's going to give you the information that you have to replace a product because that product has left. So it might be okay for it to go missing um, because you covered that in the cost of the room, but quick, buy some more because you need more product. Um, there's many benefits, um, say, listed down here. I'm not going to go through them all, um, but it's very much what's right for you. Um, are you doing it? Do you want to do loss, track and trace? Do you want to reduce your um, inventory? Um, is it that you want to speed up production? Do you want to start pulling um, your products through production instead of pushing it through? So you can be more selective on what goes through um, production. Um, there's lots of different things. And I think in the combination um, of what you're looking for in it, you can put them together to actually get your return on investment. Um, and the last one, um, just here, and I'll skip through to this line because Gillian's looking at me because my time's nearly up. Um, UHF is a management tool to better understand your own business and to make better choices that save you money. It's just like a sat-nav. This is what I say to everyone. It will guide you. It will give you advice. Do you have to take the information? No. Is it gospel? No. There are some small little things in there where you might not get the right data, but it's given you more information than you've ever had before, um, and it will allow you to make better choices in your business to keep a customer, get rid of a customer, use product A, use product B. Um, it's not the holy grail, but it is now a good business tool, um, which is going to help a lot of laundries. So thank you. <laughs>